Hello, everyone. My name is Rick Garcia, and I'm a coordinator in New Student Connections here at the University of South Florida's Tampa campus. New Student Connections, or NSC, is a resource to support you throughout your time as a bull, whether by connecting you to resources to help with academics or helping you to build community and make friends. I'm very excited to welcome you to our How to College virtual chats and our very first one of the spring 2021 semester, where we hope y'all will be able to learn more and get your questions answered regarding a number of academic and institutional topics. Thanks for being here tonight. In a moment, I will introduce some of our great student leaders who we have here with us tonight, and there'll be some helpful resources for you. Uh, for tonight's topic of mastering Canvas and decoding your syllabi so we can get ready for our classes that start tomorrow. They will give you some helpful tips and information, and then we will have a Q&A session where you'll get a chance to ask them some of your burning questions. In a moment here, I'm going to turn it over to a peer advisor leader, also known as a PAL, who will host our show tonight. Before I do, let me tell you a little bit more about them. Part of New Student Connections, PALs are a team of student leaders that are here to help you during your time at USF by giving you some individualized support and connecting you to resources, resources excuse me, on campus. Each week, these virtual chats will be hosted by peer coaches, so you all have a chance to connect with some of the great student leaders interested in helping you as new and current bulls. The PAL hosting our chat tonight is Morgan, who's a second year student majoring in health sciences and psychology. Take it away, Morgan. All right, thanks, Rick. Uh, like you said, I'm Morgan and I'm excited to be here with you all. Um, I'm a second year student on the Tampa campus, double majoring in health sciences and psychology, and I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we'll be learning more about all things regarding navigating your Canvas and syllabi, including useful Canvas features, as well as what your syllabus contains and how you can use it throughout the semester. By the end of the session, you all will have some great tools and information for starting the spring semester strong. We have some folks here with us that are the experts on campus when it comes to this topic, so please allow me to introduce Emily, Rifat, and Kayla, peer coaches at all three campuses of USF. We'll be in great hands learning more from them. Hello everyone, I'm so excited to be here tonight. My name is Emily. I'm a third year education major from the St. Pete campus. I'm from Homosassa, Florida, and I work as a peer coach for first year students. Hey everyone, my name is Rafat and I attend the USF Sarasota Manatee campus and I'm currently a pre-med in my second year and I'm very excited to be here today. Thank you. And my home campus or my home place is uh, Bradenton, Florida. Hi y'all, my name is Kayla and I am a fourth year health sciences major with a minor in psychology at the Tampa campus. And I am also one of the peer advisor leaders or the pals there and I'm from Rentham, Massachusetts. We're going to be going over something that all of us are going to be using every day, and that's Canvas. There you'll be able to locate your virtual platform for your courses, as well as the organizations and departments that you're involved with. Canvas is where you'll access most of your assignments and course materials for courses that are virtual, as well as courses that are face to face. It will be the central hub for all of the information you need. The great thing about Canvas is that it can be customized to your preferences. The main page when you log in, also called the dashboard, can be set up three different ways, card, list, and recent activity view. In card view, you will see all of your courses and it also can be modified to include the organizations and departments that you may be a part of if they have their own pages. In list view, all of your upcoming tasks and assignments will be organized in a list by due date. In recent activity view, you will be you able to view what you have accomplished or have been active in. You will definitely want to spend some time to set up your canvas to meet your preferences and make sure you know how to navigate from page to page. Also keep in mind that each class, professor, and organization that you have on canvas will have a unique setup. Before the start of every semester, go in and adjust your main dashboard and go into each course as they become available and get comfortable with how each one is set up. Find stuff like the course outline, syllabus, assignments, discussions, and due dates. After this presentation, you will be provided a worksheet to help you get started on what this might look like if you have filled out the attendance link. So here we have notifications, and we all know that notifications, at least nowadays, is very important. And luckily, Canvas always gives you notifications. So once your dashboard is set up and ready to go, you will also want to adjust your notifications to ensure you that you don't miss a due date or an important announcement from a course. There are many options when it comes to notifications. You can access them by accessing your account on the main dashboard page. Once there, you can set your preferences. You can also edit your notifications to have them either pop up immediately or once a day in the form of a daily update. Just make sure that you read 
the daily update when it comes through. Keep in mind these settings can always be changed, so experiment and find what works best for you. Lastly, let's talk about calendars. They're a great tool to keep track of all of your upcoming due dates so that you can plan your work accordingly. And Canvas has its own calendar feature. There you'll be able to see due dates for each course. The Canvas calendar can also be linked to your Google Calendar as well. But please keep in mind that due dates will only show up in your calendar if the professor publishes them and adds in a due date. So make sure you double check your syllabus and announcements to not miss any important due dates that are not in the Canvas calendar. So why is the syllabus important? Well, every course you take at USF will provide a syllabus. Each syllabus will look different, but the general anatomy will be the same. The syllabus is a roadmap for the courses you are taking. They are so important because they outline the expectations of the course, the expectations the professor has of you as a student in the course, and as well as what you as a student should expect from a professor. So it is very important to really dive and in and understand the expectations on both sides before you start the course. It gives you, in most cases, a detailed outline of what your semester will look like. Imagine driving to a new location with a GPS or roadmap you type in or find your destination and then follow directions. If you just started driving without those tools, you would probably get lost or frustrated when you could not navigate on your own. The syllabus is your GPS for a course you are taking. The syllabus will be that roadmap for both virtual and face-to-face -face classes. Now we're going to talk about what you can find in your syllabus. First, one of the most important things that you'll find in your syllabus is your due dates. The syllabus is the first stop to see what assignments you have and when they are due. This is also where you can often locate test or quiz dates and other important dates for the course. This is so important as you are planning out your semester. Make sure to take note of due dates in those first two weeks. Sometimes this can sneak up on you. You'll, you need the syllabus to plan ahead so you do not miss any early assignments. So now let's talk about grade breakdown. How your grade will be calculated throughout the semester. This is a great way to ensure that you are on track as you move through the course. This grade breakdown allows you to calculate out your grade at different points in the semester to see where you are. You never want to be surprised, so make sure that you're keeping track as you go. Next, we have the attendance or participation policy. And this is a super common question. How does attendance and participation impact my grade and how is it determined? This is even more important with the transition to remote classes. You want to make sure you know how your professor is going to determine your grade. This will ensure that you meet the requirements for your first day attendance, as well as the professor expectations for the rest of the course. Now let's talk about professor contact information. If after you have gone through the syllabus and you still have questions, or if you wanna follow up with your professor, the syllabus will include how to best contact your professor. It should also include the office hours that your professor has so that you know when you can schedule a time to speak with them. So you may be wondering how you can use your syllabus during the semester. That's what we are going to talk about now. Your syllabus is a one stop shop. Any questions you have about the course, classes, meetings, group work, due dates, etc. The first place you should always look is the syllabus. Professors spend a lot of time putting them together to outline the course expectations. Many times questions can be answered just by looking it up in the syllabus. Whenever you have a question about your course, take time to actively search for the answer in the syllabus. The syllabus will allow you to take control of your experience by really outlining the professor's expectations. You can be your best advocate by using the syllabus. You can use it to plan out your time and study strategies based on the due dates provided. You can also do a self checkup to see where you are at any point in the course by calculating your own grade and then using that information to inform how you need to change your approach or to verify that your course strategy is working. You can also use it to look up course policies or procedures if you are unsure. Even if you need clarification from the professor when you go to speak to them, if you are able to show them you looked up the information first and then still have questions, this can go a long way in building the relationship with your professors. It shows them initiative and will help them understand your question. The syllabus is your course GPS and will help navigating the course much easier. Next slide, please. All right, now that we have given you all the rundown of your syllabus and course basics, I hope you feel more prepared for your classes here at USF. You're going to get an email from the um, Academic Success Center, which we sometimes call the ASC, with a few things. You're going to get a worksheet with a breakdown of how to navigate Canvas in your syllabi. This will be super helpful to refer to as you start to navigate Canvas in your syllabi. Be sure to check out the learning support services that they offer. 
From personal experience as a USF student, using these services have definitely helped me maintain the grades that I want. Whether you have no idea where to start on assignment or just need to touch up that paper before you submit it, I strongly suggest reaching out to ASC. They're awesome. All right, now will be the time of our session after that really great information. Um, now will be the time that you guys can ask Q and A's. Um, so everyone here will be able to kind of pitch in from personal experience and offer some more knowledge. So feel free to ask a question in the chat. Um, and it looks like we've already got some rolling in. So I will go ahead and start with a couple of those. So the first question is, where can I find due dates and assignments in my courses? So you'll be able to find all your due dates and assignments definitely in your syllabi for your courses. Um, it can be on the main page in Canvas, but like we mentioned earlier, make sure that your professor actually published the date in Canvas, but all your due dates will be in the syllabus, so make sure you check those out. All right, the next question is, what if I am confused about where to start my course on Canvas? So what I usually do when I'm starting um, the semester, really, I go through all my courses and you want to go on the course outline on the home page because that will usually have a message from your professor and other information that you need to know. And I would also check announcements, which can sometimes be on your dashboard or if you go specifically in the courses. Um, and sometimes your professors will send out important information through your inbox or your email. So I would check all of those things to get information. Um, and then to start on a course, usually I would go through the modules because if your class is online and it is virtual, then the modules is usually going to be in order and that's where your professor is going to outline the entire course. And something else that I do is look at the syllabus and see all the due dates for assignments and write them all out in my planner so that I'm prepared for the whole semester and I know what I need to do. The next question that we have is what if I have a question about something in the syllabus? So if you have a question regarding the syllabus, what I would recommend doing is um, first emailing or contacting the, your professor. And I would do that by, first of all, actually going back to the syllabus and seeing what the professor recommends the preferred contact method is, whether that be through email, through Canvas, or either through their phone number. So I feel like that would be the best um, idea to take. All right, next we have, when do professors usually post the syllabus? So most professors post the syllabus before the first day of class. However, some do wait until the day that class does start. So when the professor posts the syllabus, you'll be able to view it on Canvas. Perfect. Um, the next question is, how can I manage all of the automatic emails from Canvas? It can feel like a lot. So I can I can answer that since I did the uh, notifications uh, slide. They usually um, there's settings where you can toggle between if you want it through your email or even through uh, other types of notifications. So if you toggle, you switch and you can sort of tailor um, what type of notifications you get. All right, and I just want to add into the email one before we move on to the next question. Um, just out of personal preference, um, like Rifat said, you can manage yours based on like a daily, hourly, weekly, whatever you want it to be how much you get notifications i personally do mine on a daily basis that way at the end of each night i can kind of catch up on what was graded what might have been added changed things like that so i always know um, what that day looks like and then kind of how to prepare myself for the rest of the week too um, but the next question is can i message my instructor on canvas so you can definitely message your instructor on Canvas um, by going to Canvas and then inbox and you'll be able to message your professor through there. However, make sure you check the syllabus to see how the professor prefers you reach out to them. Some do prefer that you email them directly rather than through Canvas. The next question is, can you break down what first week attendance policy means? Does it apply for online classes and how do we know what to do for the first class? So the first week attendance policy just means that 
you have to show up to the first class, um, usually if you do have a face to face class to make sure that you're not dropped from the class and it does still apply to online classes. And so what that might look like is doing a discussion board is usually what has been my experience. Professors will have you just introduce yourself and reply to other students so you can kind of get the feel of what a first day class would be like if it was in person. And so what you should do to know what to do for the first class is again going through the course itself and looking at what assignments are due um, as well as checking you know messages and announcements from your professor. And I just want to add on to that um, answer from Emily really quick. I know for like she said, like first week attendance policy does vary class to class and some people or uh, some professors will have discussion boards or things like that. I know for most of my online classes that I've had so far, it'll be like a syllabus quiz due within the first week. Most in person classes require that first day attendance um, and then also something additional like a syllabus quiz. So definitely just keep an eye out for Canvas notifications and of course everything we've talked about and it'll be posted and it's really helpful. Um, other than that, let's see. Next question is what do online or I'm sorry, what do office hours look like with online classes? So office hours do vary profess from professor to professor, but you'll be able to see that in each of your syllabi as well. I have it listed there. Most professors are all professors if it's a virtual class. Their office hours will be virtual as well. And like I said, you'll be able to see that information in the syllabus. To kind of follow up with that question, the next one is what exactly are office hours and what should we use them for? So office hours are a time that your professor will have outside of class where they're logged on and they'll be there to answer any questions. And so that's exactly what you should use it for. If you need to talk to your professor about anything, if you have questions or need help, you can log on and be able to talk to your professor and just really talk to them about anything that you wouldn't be able to in class or if you don't have the time for that. Um, I personally like going to office hours if I have a test coming up or even if I don't just to go over material with my professors, make sure I'm understanding everything and just to build that bond with my professors, especially in this virtual setting. I know for me, I'm a visual learner, so learning online is a bit more difficult for me. So I like going to their office hours and just kind of going over it again definitely helps. All right, the next question is where can I find my syllabus? So in order to find a syllabus, usually if you go to the page of your class, you can see a syllabus tab on the left corner. However, sometimes a professors may not put a syllabus tab. So in order to sort of find a syllabus, I would you date uh, professors usually put it on their home tab. So if you click home, you usually see a link for their syllabus. All right, next we have our classes happening in person this semester. For the most part, I don't think so, but also in my experience um, last semester, while my classes were virtual, but I did have some face-to-face -face sessions where I had to go to a classroom um, to do something. For me specifically, it was a teaching demonstration, so I had to teach my class um, to kind of get that experience since I'm an education major. But other than that, I think it was four times that I went. So for four classes, I was in person, but all the other times it was a live session. And so it might vary and depend also because you have different options. It could be a hybrid where some of it will be in person and some of it will be virtual or it's completely online. So it really depends. But for the most part, it seems um, classes are online and virtual. To add towards what Emily said, um, for me personally, all my classes were virtual. However, some of them were actually in person. So, and I couldn't go to the classes because I've immunocompromised people in my family. So in order to not only look out for myself, but also my family, I actually emailed my advisors in order to find classes that were online. So if you're ever worried about taking online classes, it's best to email your advisors and go on from there. And they will definitely help you a lot. And to just piggyback off of um, what was just said, um, last semester and this semester, I have either fully in-person classes or some hybrid classes. And what that kind of looked like was, of course, um, social distancing at all times, wearing masks in class, like kind of collaborating with students from afar. So it's kind of nice to have that sort of component. And most of, I think all of the classes actually that I've had that were in person did offer an online option as well. So if I ever couldn't attend the class in person or if I ever didn't want to or feel comfortable with it, I could attend that live lecture online. So it's really nice to have that option. Um, but for me personally, like it was also nice to be able to physically go to a building and kind of sit in on 
um, a lecture. So next question after that is how do we know exactly how classes are happening, whether that be in person, online, hybrid, et cetera? So there's a few different places you can go to view whether your class is online or not. Um, the first place is Oasis, where you register, where you view your class. You can go to Oasis, then student registration. We get a glance and you'll see whether your class is supposed to be online or in person there or whether it's a hybrid. And then um, for more details, you'll be able to go to each of your syllabi and the professor will say whether it's all online and like non-synchronous sessions or whether it's all online and there are synchronous sessions or if it's a hybrid class or if it's in person, you'll be able to find all that information there. All right, so the next question is, how do y'all break down a syllabus and pull out what is important for you? It's kind of overwhelming. Okay, so um, for me, um, usually every syllabus that I get, they follow some sort of like structure. And um, what I do is I usually take out the things that I see um, in every single syllabus, which is usually like USF policies and like technology policies. So I take all that to fluff out and I see the main components of each syllabus and I go on from there. Um, I usually like to go through my syllabi by just like he said, like going through the most important parts. And I like to have my planner out with me while I go through my syllabi and mark down all the important due dates, test dates, color code my little planner to help me get set up. Yeah, I do the same thing as you, Kayla. I get my planner and I write down all my assignments on my calendar as the date that they're due and I color code them so I know which class it's for and I could easily refer to that because I always carry it with me. I'm a very organized person. Um, but another thing I would look at is also how your professor prefers to be contacted because not every professor is the same and it's just also important to have that information ready like their phone number, email or whatever because when you do have that time where you have to go also office hours so if you have to go see them and talk to them or if you need to email them about something that's quick and doesn't need office hours it's good to know what you need to do to do that all right next we have i'm seeing stuff on my canvas calendar already and it looks like a lot how do y'all manage all of these responsibilities that's a that's a hard question it's really hard honestly to balance things sometimes but at first but you kind of get used to it um, as you pace yourself and um, just getting into a routine really, I think is what helps me the most and starting like a schedule and scheduling things out and just doing the same thing every day and, you know, do, making a to do list of what you're going to do every single day so that you know what you have to get done and just trying to be as organized as possible helps to really balance things, um, especially if you, you know, sync your calendar so you know, like when you're working, if you have a job that you need to work at this time so you know, oh, I have an assignment due later tonight and I'm going to be working all day. I need to get that done now. That's like the best thing that you can do for yourself. Yeah, Emily's definitely right. Like creating a schedule for yourself really helps. And like we've previously mentioned too, just by like mapping out all the due dates of your assignments for the whole semester, doing that the first week helps a lot because then you can see when your exams are and you can literally like what I like to do is I, I know I'm a procrastinator. Um, so I like to literally like write down times I'm going to study and like schedule that in so that way I know I'm going to get it done. And when you break it down like that, it's a lot easier to get through. Yeah, to add on towards what Kayla and Emily said, I totally agree. I also want to um, add on to get a really big calendar, like a marker board calendar. We can write everything down and sort of like visually see everything because I know Staring at a computer is very tiresome, so I like having something that's very tangible. So getting like a marker board with like a calendar on it and like putting all your dates into it really helps a lot. Uh, yeah, and not to get too redundant, um, but I do agree with everything that's been said thus far and kind of like Kayla was talking about earlier, using a planner is something that's super helpful with kind of balancing that. And I know for me, I always color code my actual Canvas courses. So whenever I look at my calendar, I know exactly what class it is and kind of how to map out my week around my job and then all different things like that. Um, and honestly, like whenever I have free time, if I have enough time to sit down and take a quiz I'll, or like post a discussion post, I'll kind of do some of those smaller assignments so they're not adding up near the end of the week. Um, and another thing with online classes that I found like 
Some of them have really strict structures, but some of them you can do the entire course in one week if you really wanted to. Um, so paying attention to when modules open is really helpful so you don't get over ambitious and try to work on something um, that's not open, but rather like kind of paying attention to those two so you can plan more accordingly for that as well. Um, but uh, it looks like we have one more question. Um, any advice for starting a new semester for the first time? First day jitters here. So first of all, it's totally normal to be a little bit nervous. Uh, it means you care, but also like, don't worry, you know, just take it one day at a time, one class at a time. Um, like we had said, like planning ahead definitely helps. And then just be yourself in your classes, reach out to professors when you need help, never be afraid to reach out to someone best part about USF is that everyone's like super nice honestly and I'm not just saying that because I work here um, but everyone's like super friendly so if you ever have a question reach out to your professors or like your peer coaches your pals they're all super helpful and just try to keep in mind too like everyone's in the same boat as you we're all just like doing our classes and everything and you're gonna get it done and you're gonna do great yeah, like we was saying, aside from being organized, as we have mentioned over and over again, um, making those connections is a great idea, is a great place to start um, with your peer coach or your pal and um, your professor, because a, a good thing to do like on the first day if you were in person would be to talk to your professor just so they know who you are and it makes it easier to ask questions and go to them for help so you're not as nervous the next time and they know who you are and just having that relationship is very helpful. And then also just taking advantage of the resources that you have on campus because there's literally so many and the something that I did that I regret from my first year was not taking advantage of it because you're paying for all of those things through your tuition so you might as well take advantage of it and there are so many people who are here to help you so don't ever be afraid to reach out and like Kayla said we're all in the same boat this is all new to us we're all going through something very similar so don't be afraid to lean on people as well and try to make friends um, and just have a support system really, you know, connect with other students and make a group chat or something so that you all are having this place where you can go to ask questions if you do end up being too scared to ask your professor or someone higher up. Yeah, and also to add on what they said, um, I, for me personally, I usually like um, emailing my professors and sort of introducing myself to them or if it's in person, I just go to them and I talk to them, kind of introduce myself. Another thing I really like doing is going to the people's tab in Canvas and seeing who's in my classes. And if I know anyone, I usually, you know, sort of like buddy up with them and sort of like, you know, talk to them. That makes me more comfortable. That makes me realize I'm not the only one in the class. So it's nice knowing another person in, in your class. But if, if that's not the case, um, luckily Canvas also has a discussions tab for each class where you can post questions and you can probably, as mentioned earlier by Emily, make group chats and um, meet new people. So yeah. yeah, and that's like all super great advice and all things and techniques, tricks um, that I've also used like throughout my um, semesters here and kind of the first day jitters kind of always appear for me just because that's a totally new schedule and a totally new like environment that I'm in for each semester. Um, so I always try to like take things a day at a time and kind of try to get past that first week. So I'm kind of in a set routine and a schedule and like after that first week, I know what to expect and how to set myself up for the rest of or the rest of the semester after working out some trial and error things um, and things like that. But really, like Kayla was saying, like USF is full of a bunch of great people and you will meet great people here like group chats are really helpful in classes and there's just so many things that are um like you can take advantage of while you're here in classes because the people and the professors here really do want you to succeed so that's always a really great feeling and a comforting thing to have to go into um knowing each semester um but the next question is what do peer coaches do and how can we connect with you so what i do as a peer coach at the saint petersburg campus and how i describe what we are is really like your first friend on campus. And so usually your peer coach, what I would do is um, I connect with my students and reach out to them first to establish that connection. So I think typically you, your peer coach would reach out to you and connect with you. And then from there, you'll have a relationship where you're constantly 
you know, hang out with them or talking to them and they're pretty much just always there for you for questions and they're always giving you information and things like that. Um, and there's other things that they do as well, but really they're just there for you and they're a resource and they're very knowledgeable about the resources on campus. Um, and so you can go to them about anything, whether that's you wanting to get connected to another resource or just to talk to them if you just need to rant. And if you're hoping to connect with a peer coach, sorry, Emily, I don't know if you said this, but just in case, um, if you're hoping to connect with a peer coach at any of the three campuses, we'll have a slide at the end while we're just giving a, a bit of a wrap up and conclusion with contact info for um, each of the three campuses and their respective um, office where the peer coaches live and work. Um, so you can definitely reach out to them there and they'll get you connected. All right, the next question is, what if we aren't totally sure about our classes? Can we edit them this first week? So yeah, um, to answer that question, um, there's something called add drop week. So as as it means add drop, you can ask, you can either add your classes or drop your classes if you don't if you really feel comfortable with your class. However, I would just would like to mention the time for that is from January 11th to January 15th. After January 15th, you're sort of locked into your classes. So if you want to make any edits to your classes, if you want to take another class or drop a class, make sure you do it up until January 15th. And tomorrow we actually have a, sorry Morgan, we actually have a How to College chat going over how to adjust your classes and that chat will be at uh, seven o'clock tomorrow. All right, uh, the next question is, how would you say college classes were different than high school for you? So yeah, um, for me, I. It's been almost like over a year since I've graduated high school, but for me personally, it really depends on what type of high school I went to. The type of high school I went to was an Ivy high school, so the classes I took are sort of like the classes I'm taking right now. Maybe, if not, maybe a bit more easier college classes, but for other people, um, college classes might be, a, might be a, uh, a tad bit more challenging. It really depends on what sort of line you're in, like for pre-meds especially, it's very um, challenging, but but yeah, it's really up to you as a person. If if you liked your high school classes, I'm pretty sure you're going to like your college classes as well. Yeah, um, pretty much the same as he said. Um, I also took IB classes and AP classes and I finished the IB program. Um, and so my classes were very rigorous to say the least. And I had a lot of work and it was honestly probably more overwhelming than just because you know you're taking college level courses when you're not really ready for it you know you come out of middle school and you're just right into like pretty much college classes and so that was a little bit harder for me then than now that i'm in college because i've had time to learn like what works for me and i've established like a routine and schedule and i know what i have to do and you, you just really get used to it and so in that sense my classes now are easier as well but it's kind of different because you're taking classes that are relevant to your major. So you actually get to take classes that you're interested in and that will help you for your career, whereas you might not have in high school. And another thing is that like your general education courses that you take in the beginning um, when you're getting your AA is kind of like high school and you take like regular um, kind of classes that aren't relevant to your major and everyone's taking them. So I took like humanities and sociology and so things like that. I agree. I definitely found my classes in high school to be more overwhelming than they were in college. And just like Emily said, it's stuff you're like actually interested in. So that helps. But for me, like the biggest difference in classes was the amount of resources available um, in college. I feel like especially at USF, like there's a lot more resources. One, the professors, they really want you to succeed, like Emily said. And they have their office hours on the syllabus and they're always willing to like help you out and meet with you. And then we also have like other on campus resources or virtual ones right now, like the Academic Success Center, which has like a lot of tutoring and stuff. So there's just like a lot more extra help, I think, to get through those classes. Um, like I said, like the Academic Success Center and just reaching out to your professors. And then also like everyone had mentioned before, um, making groups with like your the other students in your class, that helps a lot too. 
And I just want to add on to uh, this question as well, because I kind of had the opposite experience in classes um, in high school because I just did like dual enrollment without any AP, IB, um, et cetera. So I took like the easiest classes I possibly could. Um, so when I got to college, especially being health sciences and then like adding a second major, I was way more overwhelmed than I ever was in high school. Um, and like Rifat was saying, it depends on the type of high school you went to. And because for me, it was a very small private school. Um, so it depends on like the rigor of your courses that you're used to and kind of learning how to transition into something a that me that may be it's completely different or like depending on your major knowing kind of what you're getting yourself into and how much may be required of you because i know for me it definitely took the full first semester for me to really like get into my schedule and kind of figure out how to adjust to college level courses as well um so it looks like we have one more question and that would be how have y'all been managing um maybe having more online classes than you did before Having more online classes was definitely a bit of an adjustment for me. Um, it took me a couple of weeks to figure it out, but honestly, like what I did is I went back to my trusty old planner. I wrote out literally everything like I had to do, even like non-school related stuff, just like, you know, doing laundry or like stuff like that, just like mapping out my entire day and to-do lists. They're my best friend and just like, that's how I stayed on track. And also I would even um, schedule my breaks in there too, to make sure I was taking breaks and like walking around, getting a change of scenery, even like switching from one room to another room that just to like break up your day. That was something that really helped me like get through all those online classes and something that I'm going to continue to do throughout this semester for sure. Um, yeah, kind of like Kayla said, having a planner or a calendar for me specifically, I had a tangible calendar for things that I had to do for work and um, like events that were coming up and things like that. And then I had a planner for my assignments and then um, my Outlook calendar for other things. And so that way I had them separated, but I was still organized and, you know, color coding and making to do lists, just being as organized as possible. And then also another thing that I tell my students to do is to even if you don't have a live session and you're not really, you know, in class per se, you should still like have that time where you are doing assignments and like give yourself a time period where it would be sort of like you would be in class and just do work then and just kind of like schedule things out that way and have breaks. That's really important. Like Kayla said, getting a change of scenery, going outside because it is very unhealthy to sit in front of the computer for hours. You need to like stretch, get some water, a snack, go outside. You need some fresh air because it can be very exhausting. And one more thing to add on, something I realized is that with having so much technology around us, like phones and everything, it really strains us, especially for me because my eyes get like really, yeah. So um, what I do is I like getting post-it notes and just writing random things that just come to my mind and I just like tape them to my wall right in front of me. That way it catches my attention. So that's a really good method to do. All right, those are some really great questions and I know I learned a lot just from this session um, and a huge thank you to all of our lovely peer coaches um, and I do want to open up the floor one more time um, for everyone to kind of talk about some key takeaways or like most important things that they've learned and kind of wrap up for the night. Um, I would say one of the most important things to remember is just don't be afraid to utilize your resources. And I mean, like us, your peer coaches, your pals, your professors, um, other on-campus resources like ASE, Academic Success Center, like we're all here for a reason. Don't be afraid to use us. Yeah, using resources is so important as we, as I said earlier, and as Kayla has said a couple of times as well. Another thing I think is not being afraid to try new things, even though we are virtual. And that could be like simply trying like different study techniques, just really being flexible and going with the flow and adjusting as things happen. Because I think if there's anything I've learned in the past couple semesters, it's been that you have to be flexible and you have to be able to just go with the flow and trust the process and just, you know, take things as they come and just, you know, try different things. You learn as you make mistakes and you grow. And that's the most important thing I think to take away from this. And for me, uh, something that I learned throughout, you know, my first year of university is to do something right now that your future self will thank you for. 
And especially now during, you know, COVID, um, we're all sort of in our homes and, you know, in lockdown. Right now is a very good way to plan out your future because I know if we're in person, planning out is a bit tough. But if you're always, you know, at your desk, um, planning out your future and what to do once the um, once COVID ends is a very great way to um, sort of, you know, pra practice and see what you should do for your future. And one more thing is don't be hesitant to um, email and like email or text your professors. Um, it's not like you're seeing them face to face. So, you know, emailing them is like, oh, okay, I don't have to see them. But um, yeah, just email them and always ask them questions because they will help you like 110% for sure. Yeah, and uh, one big takeaway for me is just kind of like we were talking about earlier, getting past that first day, like, because that's honestly the hardest part of like starting a new semester. Um, just kind of once you take that first step, everything after that will fall into place exactly how it's supposed to. So if you like really step out of your comfort zone or really just kind of step out in general to just like set yourself up for success this semester, it makes a huge difference in how you'll view the rest of the semester and how it'll be carried out. So it's always exciting to have that first day and that experience and just see that it can only go up from there. Those were some great questions, everyone, and great content. Thank you again to our peer coaches from all three of our great campuses for helping us all to learn more and get ready for our classes together and just get our questions answered. To um, connect with um, the folks we mentioned earlier, the Academic Success Center, which have some great helpful tips and resources um, on these topics. Their email is currently displayed on your screen, asctampa at usf.edu. Um, and anyone from any campus can take advantage of those great resources. So go ahead and shoot them an email if you have a question. Um, to connect with us here um, at all three campuses, connect with a peer coach or folks that are doing work to help new students or continuing students, um, our contact info um, via an email address and our Instagram handle is displayed on the bottom half of that slide currently on your screen. Um, so on the bottom left, you'll see contact info if you are at St. Pete's campus. In the middle, you'll see contact info if you're at Tampa's campus. And on the bottom right, you'll see contact info if you're on the Sarasota Manatee campus. So there are folks willing and ready to help y'all at all three campuses. All you need to do is ask. So reach out. We will be more than happy to connect you with a peer coach or forward you to, you know, another resource. So really any and all questions are welcome. For more information about these virtual chats, um, and for other great opportunities for All Bulls this fall, that'll be a great one-stop shop for you, like I said. Um, thanks again for joining us to learn more about how to college, and as always, go Bulls!